My name is Lisa Langell and I'm here to talk to you about how to use and get started with your Photo Pro Eagle Series tripod. There are three different models, the E6, the E6L, the E7, and then there's a fourth model, the bigger E9. I'll be showing you how to use these features that apply to all of those tripods with the exception of the E9 and I'll show you what's different about that one at the end. I'll also be showing you how to get started with extending your legs, putting your legs out to 90 degrees, using this head as a gimbal head and a ball head. I'll be showing you how to use the nodal points on this lens in order to do multi-stitch panels. I'll be showing you the click stops and how to engage and disengage those. I'll show you how to make this rotate in 360 degrees and more. So let's get started. So once you get your PhotoPro tripod out of its case, the first thing you're going to want to do is likely extend the legs. So all you need to do, these are twist locks. They only require a quarter turn. Grab all three or four, depending on your model of tripod, quarter turn, and then extend out. Of course, you want to twist them back in order to secure your tripod at the right length. When you're done, just quarter turn, slide it up, twist, and you're done. One nice feature on the E7 model is that when you extend the bottom leg, it has bars at equal intervals. These bars are numbered and you'll be able to determine based upon your height how many of these bars you need to extend to. This makes set up a breeze and eliminates the guesswork when you're standing and using your tripod. So for me, I like it just a little shy of full extension. So I take it two bars less than full extension, lock it, and I'm done. So let's talk about the feet on this Photo Pro tripod. The feet are beveled and rubber so that you can use this on solid ground and not get vibrations. However, there's a secret hidden feature here. If I unscrew the feet and pull them off, there are spikes. So if you're doing anything that's slippery and you need extra security, maybe you're in the mud, you're in wet areas, you're on ice or snow, you can put those spikes in and that will work for you as well. And then just put this in your pocket. When you're done, put it back on, screw it on, and you're back to the original rubber feet. So when you find yourself in uneven terrain, or maybe you wanna shoot low to the ground, there's some neat things with this tripod you can do to help you with that. Notice that there's no center column here on the tripod. This will allow me to position my legs and get way down to the ground. So to do so, I pull up on my tripod a little bit to free it from the ground, pull the leg in a little, and pull this clip out part way. When I do it part way, I can go to 45 degrees and then push it in and lock it. And that allows a much wider distance in the legs. Or I can pull this down, pull the clip out all the way, and it can go out to 90 degrees. Do that with all of the legs, you can get down to the ground or any combination you need in order to adjust your tripod to get the shot. So when your Eagle Series comes out of its case, you may or may not have the head attached. There's this piece, which is the gimbal attachment, sometimes called the L bracket, which is different from the L bracket on your camera. And then there's this piece, which is the tripod head. So you have a screw mechanism here and you just simply put it on, attach it, tighten it, and you're good to go. Now, if these knobs are loose, you'll have a harder time tightening it because you'll try to rotate and they'll still rotate with you. So you may need to tighten these knobs down in order to get a tight grip. We'll loosen these up in a minute. All right, the next part is, is this is the gimbal attachment. This is what allows you to do birds and flight photography, wildlife, sports, anything where you need to freely move your camera and long lenses. So what you're going to want to do is take this bracket. You're going to want to loosen this knob now, this knob is really special. This has a release mechanism so that you can't have your camera fall out of the tripod because you didn't tighten it up enough or you left it too loose. So you're gonna to wanna to take this bracket, which is an Arca Swiss mount. You're going to want to put it into the slots here. This has a little button on it. You can push the button in to loosen or you can tighten until you hear that knob click. That means it's secure and then give it another good tightening so that it stays and locks in place. You don't want it to drop down like I just showed you. You want it to be locked in place. So a good tightening on that and you'll be good to go. 
Now, if you want to remove this, this knob here has a button and you need to push it in order to release it because otherwise it'll only allow you to release it so far, not far enough to get this out of here. So you're gonna wanna push this button, push it again when it stops, and that will allow you to widen that enough to pull this out. That's a safety mechanism. And like I said before, if you're done, you wanna put it back in, give it a good tightening, and in this case, make sure that this doesn't slide. It'll slide unless you tighten it really well. Now you're ready to go again. So if you need to shoot with lenses, that have a foot at the bottom, such as most long lenses, you're going to want to use the gimbal portion of this tripod that we just mounted in the previous clip. One of the things you need to know is that these lenses don't all have the built-in Arca Swiss style grooves. My Tamron 150-600 G2 does have that feature, but if yours does not, you'll want to get a lens plate that'll mount to the bottom of this foot. They make different ones for different sizes of lenses. You'll leave that on there permanently, and that Arca Swiss plate will allow you to mount to this tripod. So what you want to do from this point is take and match up the grooves with the grooves in the tripod. You may need to loosen this. And again, this also has a release button that you need to push in order to extend that far enough and get enough room to slip that lens in. You can see how I've slipped it in here, right? It just comes out and goes in. Make sure both grooves capture your lens and then tighten and give it a really good tighten. And now you're good to go. One other thing you'll wanna do. Now, I'm not touching my lens and it seems pretty balanced. However, if it seems like your lens is tipping forward or tilting backward, it's a little bit out of balance. So you can gently loosen this a little bit and then slide your lens forward or backward. Sometimes I even like to take a little Sharpie and make a mark so I know exactly how to mount it the next time. Okay, now that you have your gimbal head mounted, this is great for action because I can sit and shoot and it's light as a feather here. I can adjust it in any position, literally by using my pinky finger. You can tighten it by tightening this knob and it stays in position and now you just have the horizontal panning option. If you wanna lock it down horizontally, you'll take this knob here and twist it until it's locked down and now you can't pivot. Loosen it again and you can get just the right amount of tension. Now this is also a video pan head. So if you're doing video with any lens, this tension knob here as well as here can be adjusted. I'll talk about that more in a moment. Okay, so I now have a short lens and I have my gimbal attachment. I've removed it from the tripod and in order to use a short lens with this tripod, you're going to need an L bracket. This is different from this. This is something you need to purchase on your own. Now I have a Pro Media Gear L bracket that I'm using with my Canon R5. You'll need to find one that matches your specific brand and model of camera. There's all kinds of different options out there. One of the reasons why I chose this one is because my LCD screen can open up and spin around every way I need it to go. Not all L brackets will allow you to do that. So if you have an LCD screen that articulates, make sure it's one that works with that L bracket and you'll have a good combination. So now that I have my gimbal head off, my little gimbal head attachment, I'm just gonna pop that in my pocket and we're gonna put this lens on. So I just align it here. I may have to release that button like I showed you before to widen this. Align it, tighten it, Give it a good little shove to make sure it's in there good and you're good to go for your short lens work. If you want to go from horizontal orientation to vertical, you are going to release the button, twist and push it in again to release it fully and then just rotate your lens. This is the reason for the L bracket and then you're going to drop it in and secure it. and then you're good to go. Once you have your lens mounted, you can actually put this lens on its nodal point. So if you were doing multi-stitched panels of a horizon or maybe the Milky Way, you can engage not only click stops, but put your lens on its nodal point to eliminate distortion. 
So in order to do so, there are a couple of buttons back here. There's this button here, and then we're gonna use this knob. So I'm gonna push this button and I can tip this back to 45 degrees, or I could even go all the way to 90 degrees, but I'm gonna leave mine at 45 for the moment. And then I'm gonna use this knob to loosen and bring it back down to level. So in this point, you can see the lens is much over at center point here than it was in the original orientation, which would have been here. See how the difference is? The lens is not over its nodal point, or this is not centered over the nodal point, but now when I push it back, it's now centered over the nodal point. And so now you can tighten this back knob again to secure it, and now you can do your panos. The other neat feature with panos is that you can use these knobs. The larger one does the rotation and the tension. And keep in mind, this is great for videography. This is a pan head as well to get the nice smooth starts and nice smooth stops. That's really important in video. Other tripods, unless you have pan head technology built in, you will not have that fluidity to do those nice smooth starts and stops. It'll stutter. But beside that point, going back to the nodal point, this smaller knob here can be loosened or tightened. If I tighten it, you will get multi-click pano type click stops. So I can count and go, okay, two clicks and then a shot, two clicks and then a shot, or however many you want in between your shots. So even if you're doing this in the dark, such as for night photography, when you're doing multi-stitch panos of the Milky Way or what have you, you know exactly how far you need to go before you take another shot and you still get the proper amount of overlap. That is a great feature. And all you do to engage it is twist the smaller knob to tighten or loosen that knob back up and you're back to fluidity. This Photo Pro is unique in that it has a patented feature that allows you to shoot in 360 degrees rotation in any direction. In order to do that, you can of course rotate this way or you can push this button back here and I can go to 45 degrees, 90 degrees, or I can bring this all the way down to 90 degrees this way. So you can shoot flowers down below, the trees up above, whatever you'd like to shoot. And then you of course have that rotation. So you can put it back down in any direction that you want or turn your legs and put it in whatever direction you want. It's completely 360 degrees in any direction. One of the features that I adore about this tripod is that when you're shooting, you don't have to constantly adjust the height of the legs in order to get to perfect level. It can do minor adjustments for you in an instant. So there's a knob here. And if I loosen this knob, my tripod floats around the tripod head on a bowl. This bowl is part of the tripod itself, not part of the head. So if you get the tripod and the head kit, you'll have this feature. And I can literally look and in an instant, get to level, a quarter twist, it'll lock it, and now you have level for whatever you need. And if you need to shoot something else quickly, it's instant level, no more adjusting those legs to get those micro adjustments. This is one of my favorite features about this tripod. So if you've ever forgotten the gimbal head piece that goes with this tripod, there is a little hack that you can use and it requires the use of the foot and your mounting plate if you don't have a lens that already has that groove in your foot. And what you're going to do is you're going to first take this knob and loosen it, then put this so this is up. The next thing you're going to do is slide that lens right in there. Make sure this is tight. Tighten it up and now you've got your lens mounted. You will use the little loosening tool here to loosen the collar around your lens and now you can orient it back to horizontal or vertical. So either way that will work for you and that's another little way that you can use this tripod and make it efficient for you. So you're done for the day. You're ready to go home or maybe you're ready to go on the road or on a flight to your next adventure. So you wanna pack this to go into a suitcase, perhaps. Of course, you can collapse it down this far. And if you have the E6 or the E6L, those will collapse down to 19 inches and fit in a carry-on. 
but if you have the E7 or the E9, you may need to put them in your checked bags. But here's one little trick to make it a little bit shorter for you. Instead of the head in this orientation, just take this button, push it down until it goes 90 degrees below. And now you've made it even shorter for yourself. And I took the gimbal head piece off in order to do that and just pack that in your suitcase as well and you're good to go. If you've purchased the PhotoPro E9 tripod, this is a much bigger tripod. There are a couple little features that I wanna show you that are unique to this tripod. First of all, notice that this plate in this gimbal head can slide out or in in order to help you with your center of gravity because with much larger lenses, center of gravity can make a difference in your shoots and using this tripod. In order to adjust it, you just need to switch, pull this knob and then pull this in or out as needed and then tighten the knob again and you're good to go. The other thing is the leveling plate, the built-in leveling plate. This is built into the tripod. This is the knob that adjusts that leveling plate. So you just adjust it, tighten the knob, and you're good to go. I hope this tutorial has helped you use your Eagle Series Photo Pro tripod. If you have any questions, feel free and contact support or me, and I'll be glad to help you or direct you to the right person. In addition, don't forget to fill out the warranty. There's a link online and I've put it in the video so that you can go to the warranty site. You get a six year warranty with these tripods and registering your tripod will help you ensure that your tripod is fully warranted. I hope this was helpful. I wish you much success in your photographic journeys and I will see you out in the field. Okay.